Hi, I'm Thomas with Believe in the Run. And this is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And today, Robbie, what are we doing? Dude, we're gonna talk about the top most exciting shoes of 2024. Top most, no. Can you believe it's already 2024? I can, because the calendar says it. I know, so. but we just wrapped up the best of 2023, so check out those videos. So a lot of this stuff's coming in the next, some of it in the next month or so, some of it in the fall of this year. It's kind of just what we're excited about. Some of them we run in, some of them we haven't. Do we have any surprises for people? I'm sure there's a couple surprises in here. So let's do this. Thomas, we're gonna keep this short and sweet. We, we already shot one version of this video. It was like way too long. So we're just gonna keep it short and sweet, put the stats on the screen. Boom, boom, boom. If you need any other information, we have a whole thing on our website about the most exciting shoes coming up. So that's- And we, just in case yeah. you didn't know, believeintherun.com is the website. And it's sometimes a lot of the reviews that you don't come to YouTube are over on the website, so check that out. All right, let's do it. We're gonna do it in alphabetical order, kind of like zip through these as best as we can. We're skipping A, sorry, Ultra. But we're going straight to Brooks. We're talking about the Brooks Ghost Max 2. So last year, that was a pretty exciting shoe for us. Surprising shoe. I think it was our best Max Cushion shoe. It was. Yeah. It was, it um, was a surprise. It, the nice thing about this is it's not changing too much. Yeah, I think they're adding, well, it has the DNA Lock V3, but it's just a upper change, kind of a design change. Still looks pretty good. We're excited about that one. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's move on to the Craft Explorer Hybrid. So Craft has kind of done some cool things in the last couple of years in that road to trail like hybrid range. And the Explorer Hybrid is another one of those shoes. It's a gravel shoe. It has a Vittoria rubber outsole. You like that for your bike tires. I do. I feel bad because I just changed out my Vittoria tires for Continental this past weekend. So going to Adidas. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so. That's a pretty exciting shoe. It has a TP, steam TPE bead midsole, so it should be pretty comfortable. Now, in the past, I haven't gotten too excited about the craft shoes. They've been kind of like almost there. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like this one's gonna be like, boom? I, I think so. Uh, we got, I think the reviewers just got it in, the trail reviewers. I think the fit is a little weird, which has always been the case mm -hmm. with craft. But I feel like if you can dial that in, the ride underfoot, really nice. All right, and I love their team. Yeah, they've done, Dave Laney, shout out, you're a good guy. All right, let's go on to the Diodora Gara Carbon. In the Diodora's first... got the look. They had- oh, yeah, I have the hat on. Yeah, they almost had the performance down, but it was like close. The foams just were like almost there. And this year, I think we're gonna see a lot out of Diodora that we like. And the Gara Carbon, Robbie, I've already thrown it on my feet. I've already taken, you know, some initial uh -huh. first steps thoughts. in it. And <laughs> I'm excited. Like it's it's up there with the other brands as far as having a race day trainer. And this really is a race day trainer. It's a P-Bax midsole mm -hmm. with a carbon plate. Fairly lightweight. It's not, It's I think it's in the eight ounce range, eight and a half ounce. So it's going to compare really to the Saucony Pro 4, which we'll talk about, Endorphin Pro 4, we'll talk about here in a second, uh, to the New Balance um, uh, SC Elite B4. Mm -hmm. And that range of shoes, it's right in there in that mix. Cool. All right, uh, let's move on. So let's go to one that I believe the day this video comes out is when they're announcing it. So this is the Hoka Cielo X1. Which we actually have tons of miles in right now. Yeah, I actually, I've only had, I've only done one run in it because- Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> okay. I, sorry. But, I have but tons, you, you have Meg and I have tons of runs in it. Um, I mean- this I even is, think Carl who's behind the camera has been running in it. Yeah, this is a crazy one. It's a PVAX midsole, winged carbon plate, extreme rocker geometry, kind of everything that Hoka has thrown in one shoe at a 275 price point. What are your thoughts so far on this? My thoughts are, for me, it's not that they're gonna pump it up as the top tier race day shoe. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, for some people it might be, it's gonna depend on your foot strike. For me, it's much more that complement shoe to the Rocket X2. I really like the Rocket X2 for race day, so I'll stick with that. But this has a fun rocker, soft feel that when you're done with your run, your legs feel really refreshed. My initial impressions of this shoe were that it felt to me the way I had wanted the Primex too strong to feel. It's like that almost just crazy bounce, like, I don't know, release, compression and a release for me. 
Uh, again, it feels with the rocker, felt very effortless. We enjoy the shoe. We'll give you more yeah. review as it goes on, but it's something for you to be excited about, especially if you like Hoka and rocker uh, running shoes. This is one you're gonna wanna check out. So here's the thing, Hoka has a lot of stuff coming this year that is pretty exciting. So real quick, we got the Mach X2 and the Rincon 4. Yeah, so the Rincon, it's been like three years since we've seen that. So, and it's still at a $125 price point. So getting that lightweight trainer, which apparently they've added some resilience to it so it doesn't deaden out so quickly. I think it's gonna be comparable to the Rebel uh, V4, which we've been testing and just wrote up our reviews. You can check those reviews out. I think it's gonna be in that range. It's gonna go up against stuff like the Nova Blast mm -hmm. from ASICS. It's just gonna be a fun, lightweight, well-cushioned shoe. Yeah, the Mach X2, that's gonna have, there's some big changes to that, like full PIBA, top layer. Th that also comes with the PBAX plate and a lateral wing for a little bit of increased stability. So only the second version of that shoe, but kind of some big changes for it. All right, let's keep moving. Let's go to the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2. The first one was kind of a big surprise for us. It's so much fun to run in. The problem I had with it was that my toes and I have a narrow foot and I don't normally, you know, have any problem with a low volume toe box. But in the previous version, it's a little short and the toe box was a little shallow. Yeah, it was definitely an issue. They've apparently fixed that with this shoe. We don't have it yet, but they were made it a very strong point to say that the toe, there's more room in the toe box. And it seems like it's gonna be more aggressive on yeah, the midsole. Which is crazy, but like, yeah. Like how do you get more? <laughs> Just cut off the from the back half. Yeah, so it's yeah. gonna be, it should be a very nice shoe and an update to the first version of that. Moving along, next brand is a new one that we saw at TRE. So they're called Mount to Coast. Don't love the name, but I love the concept <laughs> behind the shoe. Yeah, it's a, they're designing shoes that are meant for road ultra marathons, which is- That's why I put them out in there. It's a pretty niche, <laughs> good point. <laughs> it's a pretty niche segment, I guess, but they apparently took some designers from former designers from Nike, Brooks, I think New Balance. Nike must just have a bucket of designers <laughs> that they're <laughs> like, everybody, you want one? Because it a... seems like everybody I talked to was a former Nike designer. So Mount to Coast, they have two shoes coming out, the S1 and the R1, I believe. One's for more training, one's more for race day. We tried them on at the running event and I was pretty surprised at how good it felt underfoot. They look good, they yeah. felt good. It's, it's something that I think is gonna, maybe it's people who are looking for that, well cushioned, long distance shoe are gonna be like this. Uh, is the shoe, the crazy thing is though you talk about road ultras, mm. all of us do long runs and we want that <laughs> shoe that, you know, can handle that 20 mile run and make your legs feel good. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's a shoe that you save for yeah those days. Yeah, and I think their whole thing is they put some stability elements that are light stability to give you that extra increased support over longer mileage. So, so your form breaks down. Yeah, I mean, mine breaks down within the first two miles, so. All right, but let's move on to New Balance SC Pacer V2. Uh, I mean, there's a few from New Balance. There was the Rebel, which we've already reviewed. It's pretty much the fuel cell line plus one. Yeah, so the Pacer V2, the Rebel V4, and the Balos, which is a brand new shoe. Balos, that, that's Balos. the fresh foam version. I think it's Balos. Balos, yeah. Um, all exciting shoes coming this year. I mean, the Pacer, I feel like that's the most, that's the shoe people are most excited about. It looks like Which is funny because the, the first version was kind of like a foam. Yeah, it was like a, almost like a flat, like carbon plated flat. So this is, add some cushion to the midsole some design elements. I call it SC Elite V4 Lite. Yeah. Like it's a little lower stack, same ingredients. It's gonna have more aggressive feel. It's obviously tuned for the 10K to maybe half marathon unless, for a normal person. <laughs> oh, unless you're Emily Sisson. Emily Sisson is <laughs> gonna run the whole marathon in it yeah. and feel great. So that shoe looks fun and fast and that's gonna compete there with those like tempo day shoes that we always love mm -hmm. to play with. So those are that's gonna be great. But what makes the Balos special? Why I is mean, that one? The Balos, it doesn't, it's a, one of those super trainers, doesn't have a carbon fiber plate, but it has a blend of Piba, Fuel Cell, Fresh Foam. It's like basically every- Super trainer. Yeah, it's a super trainer. Every element of foam that New Balance makes is in that shoe. And it's not in the Fuel Cell range, which means that it's not necessarily for high performance, I think it's gonna be more towards the comfort end. So I think that what they're going after, it's kind of confusing because it might go up against the more. 
Yeah, I think it's just maybe, I think it's a lighter weight shoe. So yeah. kind of how the Super Blast for Asics is a lightweight max cushion shoe, even though it doesn't feel very soft, but. Yeah. So let's move on to a Nike. I mean, Nike Alpha Fly 3, everybody knows already. That has to be maybe the most exciting shoe of the year in general. Yeah, and if you didn't get one, don't worry, they're gonna be pumping them out. We've already seen- You know the, how it is. Yeah, yeah, the next colorway. Yeah, it's a bummer. If you're running a spring marathon, you're gonna just have to try to figure out a way to get your hands on it if that's what you wanna run in. Mm -hmm. I am sure that at some of these races, some of the bigger races, say your bosses and stuff, it's probably gonna be available somehow at I, these races. I would think so, but- I don't want I don't to promise anyone, <laughs> but yeah, it's been great. We have a full review of that. Megan and I have talked about it. There's a between two shoes between that and the Evo one from Adidas. So check out all the information. It's already out there. And I mean, everybody's at this point reviewed it. Who's yeah, been on the tube. It's an amazing shoe. It's probably the best. Is it the best racing shoe ever? To ever me, made? it is. <laughs> Some people don't hear. I will give it one knock. Some people who have very flat feet or something like that tend to get blisters in the shoe because it does have an exaggerated arch. It's not as bad as the previous versions, but it's there. And I don't know why, I, just the way that some people's feet must land within it, yeah. get a little friction from the uh, thing, end up with blisters. But if you don't, We've never then had yeah, them. it's the best. Yeah, it's, it's great. Also from Nike, there's a couple other shoes that we'll just mention. The Nike right. Pegasus Turbo 3. Yeah, I mean, what are you gonna it's do? Like, That's a cult classic at this point. I feel point. like everyone's been waiting for that for what seems like a decade. Yeah. Um, that's exciting. I'm not sure the release date, that'll be awesome. On the trail side, there's some exciting stuff too as well, because they're putting Vibram on the Zagama too, so. And then there's the rest of the Nike stuff. You're gonna get a new peg, Zoom Fly 6, and probably some surprises. We always get surprises from Nike, like they don't let us know that something's coming out and yeah. all of a sudden pop, there it is. Yeah, let's move on. We didn't do this shoe originally, but then we ran in it and Honestly, it's one of my more exciting shoes. Wait, what shoe are you talking surprise. about? We're talking about the Reebok Float Zig 1. Yeah. Uh, and that's up on the shelf over here. And that was a, dude, I was just surprised by this shoe. It was a really- What, what surprised you? I don't know. I guess like, it's, uh, it's Reebok. <laughs> Like, I mean, it's I not feel like they're like putting out like the craziest shoes ever, but they put out some good shoes. So the phones have been a little more advanced. Like it's weird because they are behind and they are. I kind of think of them as a budget shoe because they go on sale real quick and the foams have been decent foams. So yeah. like we've had some good shoes come out of there. But this one, I think that what you really like is that retro look. It's nice. Yeah. And then having that sweet, sweet zig foam. Yeah, it's a very flexible shoe underfoot. Just the, it's a nice and comfortable shoe. The upper is fantastic. Um, for 140 bucks, pretty reasonable. Falls in line with all the other shoes in its range. So if it's something that you just like aesthetically, I think you'll- If, if you had a starter it. jacket in the 90s, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna want them. All right, let's move on. Uh, Solomon S-Lab Spectre. We've kind of already talked about this shoe and I'm sure you've seen it out there. It's the shoe that's meant for marathoners 330 and slower. Eight minute pace and above. So a top layer with Piba foam, bottom layer of EVA, kind of to give you that extra support stability over, you know, if you're running four hours, five hours even. I think it has the potential to be a hit with runners in that range. Yeah, if you're just trying to break four and you're like, do I wear an Alpha Fly for that? Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't say no, but I'm gonna also say, this is a great alternative if you're not like, you know what, I want something that I'm gonna feel comfortable in. They've designed it so that the way that you're supposed to land on a, a shoe in the super shoe, like when you're running at the sub six minute pace or six minutes, the way that you're landing in a shoe is different and the amount of time you're spending on the ground is different mm -hmm. than if you're going eight and above. Yeah. So this shoe is supposed to optimize and help you with that stride and get you to the finish line to do your best. Yeah. So. I'm excited to see how that shoe does. It's a, it, it really is a nice shoe. I've loved wearing it. All right, let's move on. So we got the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 and Pro 4. It's gonna it's gonna be hard to top the Endorphin Speed 4 for me for this year. I think Megan, Already, I know Megan would agree with you. She's really liking it. And typically I've been kind of the one person in the office who's like, I don't know if the speed is for me. And this time I'm like, yeah, this is a really good shoe. And I have to admit, they've really dialed it in this year. Robbie, you said they kind of took the best of 
the two and the best of the three yeah. and kind of mashed it together. I feel like this is the perfect blend of those two shoes. I thought the three was a little too safe on the safe side. Um, I feel like the excitement's back. It feels like a fast shoe, but it feels like you can wear it for anything. Daily training, race day, tempo, whatever. Do you think if you didn't want to spend the money for a, like a 250 race day shoe, this would be your shoe? Oh yeah, this is, this would be perfect for that. I mean, I don't know. I just. I probably have 50 miles on this shoe already. I love it. This is one Everyone. I also have like a ton of miles on that I was surprised because I don't feel like I've run in it that much. And then yeah. I checked my Strava and I was like, oh dang, I've got like 50 miles on it. Everything you love about the speed line is there. And I don't know. I, and you don't feel yeah. guilty that you're ruining a super shoe for your nine minute easy run. True, exactly, <laughs> you know? exactly. So yeah, very excited about this. And then the door from Pro 4, I feel like, again, this is a blend of the two and the three. Uh, I felt like the three for me was just a little too soft and safe. And this, I wore this for a uh, turkey shot 5K back in November. Did you go out too fast? I went, of course I did, <laughs> absolutely. But it felt, for those first two miles, it They're felt great. amazing. <laughs> I mean, it, the turnover, it just feels like that original Endorphin Pro feel, that snappy feel, but without, maybe the harshness of it. I use it yes, for an 800 workout, so I know what you're talking about. Okay. When you get going and you really start picking up the pace, it kind of sings. I could definitely feel the plate in it. Mm -hmm. I notice a plate yeah. and uh, it's got nice cushioning. Again, I'm gonna say there's like this tier of super shoes that are gonna compete all with each other. This one, the SC Elite V4 from New Balance. I think you're gonna see the uh, Gar Carbon in there. And there's a few others that I would throw in that uh, section so lots of options for runners this year if you like Saucony, you like the way the shoe looks you're gonna have a fun shoe to run in yeah it's a good one i mean i'm always impressed with the endorphin line how they can keep putting out <laughs> really good shoes for the last four years four or five years yeah so good job Saucony. so another exciting shoe for us that has a peepa midsole that is coming this year is the topo athletic specter 2 and last year they had the the cyclone 2 that came out which was had a P-Bax midsole. But it was, it was a lot like the Rebel V2. Very similar, very Mountain. similar in many ways, including the design. Right. <laughs> um, but it was a, it's a thinner up-tempo daily trainer. Yeah, right? very, very lightweight, I think under seven ounces. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so this is more of like the training version, more max stack, which is, but it still has that- uh, Foot shape? Still has the foot shape. Um, it's coming in at like seven and a half ounces and like 37 mil stack height. So you're getting more cushion, but straight P backs and it's going to be 165 bucks. So that's pretty good. So it's making that shoe, the cyclone that little bit niche, making it more accessible for more runners. Yeah, exactly. And I think I, I felt like the cyclone last year was a sleeper hit for Topo. Like people who love that shoe really love that shoe. So I think this is going to help them elevate that profile and they stay with lower drops so it's, is it sticking with a five millimeter drop yeah a five millimeter drop yeah. all right cool all right robbie now this is you we were talked at the beginning of the video if there's any surprises there's a brand that's not really known for its running shoes it's really trying to go hard this year and go hard into race day yeah so we're talking about tracksmith uh we just had the elliott runner come out last year so now we're talking about the elliott racer which is as you may guess a race day shoe Interesting move for sure. It's interesting. Now, Tracksmith says they're committed to the amateur athlete. Mm -hmm. And so this shoe is really built for somebody who is, it, it sounds crazy because the pricing of normal Tracksmith stuff is a little on the higher end, but working athletes. And there's a solution to this one that's gonna help you train in it and then have a fresh pair on race day without having to have a fresh pair. Yeah, so and this is a trend we've seen on the trail side a little bit and it's, maybe gonna start working its way to the roadside. It was also in the Elliott to a certain degree. Yeah, a little bit. So we're talking about uh, a drop-in midsole for this shoe. So it's a TPU mid super critical midsole, but there it's when the shoe, when the customer buys a shoe, you're actually gonna get two drop-in uh, in midsoles with it. You're gonna get a training one and a race day one. So you train in it, you wear it out, you get all your miles in it. Shoe's probably still in good shape. It's got a nice upper. It's got an outsole. So you pull out your insole that's your uh, stack of 
uh, what'd you say it was? Uh, like TP, like super critical. Super critical yeah. TP, you pull that one out and you put in a brand new fresh one for race day. Basically making it feel like a brand new shoe. Right, and it's an interesting concept both on the sustainability end because you will be able to buy replacement uh, midsoles for it. It's like keeping a pair of shoes around for way longer than you normally would, Yeah, which is a cool idea. I'd like to see how it works. The only downside to it that I see is with everybody moving to Piba and we test all the shoes, mm -hmm. there's Piba race day shoes mm -hmm. and there's non Piba right. race day shoes and there's a difference. Yeah, it's been tested by their amateur support program. So there's like sub elite athletes. Or People that are running elite. way faster yeah. than most of us, but just not quite fast enough yeah. to, to be in the Olympics. Yeah, to us, they're all, they're all elite. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so they're gonna be, they, they've been testing this shoe and really love it, especially when they can switch out the race into race day. Yeah, they said they noticed the difference. Mm -hmm. All right, um, now let's move on to last thing in the video. We're gonna do some things. We're Teaser just, stuff. Yeah, it's we're not really allowed to talk about it in depth, but. You know, it's been a while since Adidas updated the uh, Adios Adi Zero Pro. Yeah. So maybe this fall, you think we'll see something? I'm, I would think so. I, I would, yeah. I mean, um, we may have seen something. Exactly. Yeah. And then we're talking about the ASICs, Metaspeed Edge Plus 2, Sky Plus 2, and Super Blast 2. Those are all Again, coming. I think you're going to see the Metaspeed Sky uh, at the Olympic trials right now. Okay, cool. I'm so, excited yeah. for that one. And for sure. definitely going to see it in Paris. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and then we got, so On has uh, Cloud Boom Echo 4 coming later this year at some point. Monster. We got the Cloud Monster 2 coming very soon. Uh, and then there's a secret monster. And then the Cloud Monster Hyper, which I think they should call it Extreme, but with like a capital X. Like like on a Doritos bag? Yeah. Okay. Bring that back. Flaming hot. Yep. Um, okay. So all those are coming. We've seen them. Pretty excited about them. They look great. And the Hyper has a really interesting addition to the midsole. <laughs> yeah, dude. So it's we're going to see it. It's going to be a wild shoe. So that's yeah. coming soon as well. Um, on the Puma side, DV Nitro Elite 3, the DV Nitro 3, Velocity Nitro 3, all those are And coming. the Elite. Um, Got thrown the DV Nitro Elite. I did say that. Did you? That was I the didn't. first one I said. I'm, we might have to rewind <laughs> again. Oh, please <laughs> do it, Carl. <laughs> um, on the Puma side, DV Nitro Elite 3. <laughs> please make that a real. And then we talked anywhere to talk about that. And then Veja. Uh, do people know what Veja is? I don't know. It's a I think if you're a hipster and you like tennis sneakers, you know what Veja is. Yeah. As a runner, they really haven't gotten in there yet. Right. So they're kind of like that. Um, sustainable. They're sus they are sustainable, which always is a red flag to me that you're gonna make a break. questionable shoes. But we tried on the one of their upcoming shoes at TRE and felt really good, so I'm excited to see. We are a little concerned because it felt so good, but we're like, does this feel good? Because we've tried Veja running <laughs> shoes in the past and they were so no, bad. No, it felt, I think it felt I good. think it felt good. The styling though was what really mm -hmm. caught my eye. Like, this is definitely a shoe you could take from running to like, just, what, just whatever. Just athleisure Lifestyle. style. Yeah. It looks hot. To me, it kind of harkens back to like the Air Max. Mm. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's good, it's nice. So, excited about that. I think that's about it. I'm sure we're forgetting some stuff. Why don't we? Why don't you ask people to just tell us in the comments what they're most looking forward yeah, to? Yeah, definitely drop it in there. Uh, there's always things popping up on Reddit and Instagram that's coming that sometimes we haven't even seen yet. And uh, anything else, you can go over to our website again. We have, there's much more content there, especially on the trail side. We're not covering all the full trail stuff, but there's really tons. Exciting stuff, the new, North speed, Face. the new Speed Go, the North Face stuff, the Tectonics 3, just some exciting stuff coming. That's it for this one. All Hope right. you enjoyed it. You know, we put a lot of work in this, especially since Carl had to edit this one twice. <laughs> so go ahead and slam that like button yeah. and subscribe to the channel because we've got more stuff coming for you. So get excited. And uh, hopefully when you're watching this, we're having a lot of fun with Hoka and Sidious Mag down in Orlando as we cover the trials. So. Yeah. And we have plenty more events coming up this year. We'll be in Boston for the marathon. We're going to be doing some fun stuff. Paris. Yeah, Paris. Paris. For the Olympics. Um. So yeah, make sure you follow us. Uh, subscribe to our email where you get all those notifications and come hang out with us sometime this year. Yeah. That's my favorite thing is seeing you people. Mm -hmm. So come out to an event. We'll probably throw some swag at you. 
it's a good time and you get to meet the other people. Yeah. All right. Thanks All right. for watching. Thank you.